March 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. This is what Moses said to the assembly of Israel in the Transjordian wastelands, the arid country opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizahab. Now it is ordinarily an 11-day journey from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by way of Mount Seir. However, it was not until the first day of the 11th month of the 40th year that Moses addressed the Israelites just as the Lord has instructed him to do. This took place after the defeat of King Sion of the Amorites, whose capital was in Heshbon, and King Og of Bashan, whose capital was in Ashtaroth, specifically in Edrei. So it was in the Transjordan, in Moab, that Moses began to deliver these words. The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb and said, You have stayed in the area of this mountain long enough. Get up now, resume your journey, heading for the Amorite hill country, to all its areas including the arid country, the highlands, the Cephala, the Negev, and the coastal plain. All of Canaan and Lebanon as far as the great river, that is, the Euphrates. Look, I have already given the land to you. Go, occupy the territory that I, the Lord, promised to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants. I also said to you at that time, I am no longer able to sustain you by myself. The Lord your God has increased your population to the point that you are now as numerous as the very stars of the sky. Indeed, may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, make you a thousand times more numerous than you are now, blessing you just as he said he would. But how can I alone bear up under the burden of your hardship and strife? Select wise and practical men, those known among your tribes, whom I may appoint as your leaders. You replied to me that what I had said to you was good. So I chose as your tribal leaders wise and well-known men, placing them over you as administrators of groups of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and also as other tribal officials. I furthermore admonished your judges at that time that they should pay attention to issues among your fellow citizens and judge fairly, whether between one citizen and another or a citizen and a resident foreigner. They must not discriminate in judgment, but hear the lowly and the great alike. Nor should they be intimidated by human beings, for judgment belongs to God. If the matter being adjudicated is too difficult for them, they should bring it before me for a hearing. So I instructed you at that time regarding everything you should do. Then we left Horeb and passed through all that immense forbidding wilderness that you saw on the way to the Amorite hill country, as the Lord, our God, had commanded us to do, finally arriving at Kadesh Barnea. Then I said to you, You have come to the Amorite hill country which the Lord, our God, is about to give us. Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go up, take possession of it, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, said to do. Do not be afraid or discouraged. So all of you approached me and said, Let's send some men ahead of us to scout out the land and bring us back word as to how we should attack it and what the cities are like there. I thought this was a good idea, so I sent twelve men from among you, one from each tribe. They left and went up to the hill country, coming to the Eshkol Valley, which they scouted out. Then they took some of the produce of the land and carried it back down to us. They also brought a report to us, saying, the land that the Lord our God is about to give us is good. You were not willing to go up, however, but instead rebelled against the Lord your God. You complained among yourselves privately and said, Because the Lord hates us, he brought us from Egypt to deliver us over to the Amorites so they could destroy us. What is going to happen to us? Our brothers have drained away our courage by describing people who are more numerous and taller than we are, and great cities whose defenses appear to be high as heaven itself. Moreover, they said they saw Anakites there. So I responded to you, Do not be terrified of them. The Lord your God is about to go ahead of you. He will fight for you, just as you saw him do in Egypt, and in the desert, where you saw him carrying you along like a man carries his son. This he did everywhere you went until you came to this very place. 
However, through all this, you did not have confidence in the Lord your God, the one who was constantly going before you to find places for you to set up camp. He appeared by fire at night and cloud by day to show you the way you ought to go. When the Lord heard you, he became angry and made this vow. Not a single person of this evil generation will see the good land that I promised to give to your ancestors. The exception is Caleb, son of Jephaniah. He will see it, and I will give him and his descendants the territory on which he has walked, because he has wholeheartedly followed me. As for me, the Lord was also angry with me on your account. He said, You also will not be able to go there. However, Joshua, son of Nun, your assistant, will go. Encourage him, because he will enable Israel to inherit the land. Also your infants, who you thought would die on the way, and your children, who as yet do not know good from bad, will go there. I will give them the land, and they will possess it. But as for you, turn back and head for the desert, by the way to the Red Sea. Then you responded to me and admitted, We have sinned against the Lord. We will now go up and fight as the Lord our God has told us to do. So you each put on your battle gear and prepared to go up to the hill country. But the Lord told me, Tell them this, Do not go up and fight, because I will not be with you, and you will be defeated by your enemies. I spoke to you, but you did not listen. Instead, you rebelled against the Lord and recklessly went up to the hill country. The Amorite inhabitants of that area confronted you and chased you like a swarm of bees, striking you down from Seir as far as Hormah. Then you came back and wept before the Lord, but he paid no attention to you whatsoever. Therefore, you remained at Kadesh for a long time, indeed, for the full time. Then we turned and set out toward the desert land on the way to the Red Sea, just as the Lord told me to do, detouring around Mount Seir for a long time. At this point, the Lord said to me, You have circled around the mountain long enough. Now turn north. Instruct these people as follows. You are about to cross the border of your relatives, the descendants of Esau, who inhabit Seir. They will be afraid of you, so watch yourselves carefully. Do not be hostile towards them. Because I am not giving you any other land, not even a footprint, for I have given Mount Seir as inheritance for Esau. You may purchase food to eat and water to drink from them. All along the way, I, the Lord your God, have blessed your every effort. I have been attentive to your travels through this great wasteland. These forty years I have been with you. You have lacked for nothing. So we turned away from our relatives, the descendants of Esau, the inhabitants of Seir, Turning from the desert route, from Elat and Ezon Geber, and traveling the way of the Moab wastelands. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab and provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land as your territory. This is because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as their possession. The Emi choose to live there, a people as powerful, numerous, and tall as the Anakites. These people, as well as the Anakites, are also considered Raphites. The Moabites called them Emites. Previously, the Horites lived in Seir, but the descendants of Esau dispossessed and destroyed them and settled in their place, just as Israel did to the land it came to possess, the land the Lord gave them. Now get up and cross the Wadi Zered. So we did so. Now the length of time it took for us to go from Kadesh Barnea to the crossing of Wadi Zered was 38 years, time for all the military men of that generation to die, just as the Lord had vowed to them. Indeed, it was the very hand of the Lord that eliminated them from within the camp until they were all gone. So it was that after all the military men had been eliminated from the community, the Lord said to me, Today you are going to cross the border of Moab, that is, of Ar. But when you come close to the Ammonites, do not harass or provoke them, because I am not giving you any of the Ammonites' land as your possession. I have already given it to Lot's descendants as their possession. That also is considered to be the land of the Raphaites. The Raphaites lived there originally. The Ammonites called them Zemzumites. They are a people as powerful, numerous, and tall as the Anakites. But the Lord destroyed the Rephites in advance of the Ammonites, so they dispossessed them and settled down in their place. This is exactly what he did for the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, 
when he destroyed the Horites before them, so that they could dispossess them and settle in their area to this very day. As for the Avites who lived in settlements as far west as Gaza, Kaphtarites who came from Crete destroyed them and settled down in their place. Get up, make your way across Wadi Arnon. Look, I have already delivered over to you Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Go ahead, take it, engage him in war. This very day I will begin to fill all the people of the earth with dread and to terrify them when they hear about you. They will shiver and shake in anticipation of your approach. Then I sent messengers from the Kadimoth desert to King Sihon of Heshbon with an offer of peace. Let me pass through your land. I will keep strictly to the roadway. I will not turn aside to the right or the left. Sell me food for cash so that I can eat and sell me water to drink. Just allow me to go through on foot, just as the descendants of Esau, who live at Seir, and the Moabites, who live in Ar, did for me, until I cross the Jordan to the land the Lord our God is giving us. But King Sion of Heshbon was unwilling to allow us to pass near him, because the Lord our God had made him obstinate and stubborn, so that he might deliver him over to you this very day. The Lord said to me, Look, I have already begun to give over Sihon and his land to you. Start right now to take his land as your possession. When Sihon and all his troops emerged to encounter us in a battle at Jahaz, the Lord our God delivered him over to us and we struck him down, along with his sons and everyone else. At that time we seized all his cities and put every one of them under divine judgment, including even the women and children we left no survivors. We kept only the livestock and plunder from the cities for ourselves. From Aurora, which is at the edge of Wadi Arnon, it is the city in the Wadi, all the way to Gilead, there was not a town able to resist us. The Lord our God gave them all to us. However, you did not approach the land of the Ammonites, the Wadi Jabbok, the cities of the hill country, or any place else forbidden by the Lord our God. God, there is a, and I'm not sure where it comes from, but there's a sense of urgency in my life right now. It has been for a while. Um, I don't know as I learn more and more about you that my passion to share about you becomes more urgent. And I truly hope it's that. I'm sure part of that urgency comes from the fact that I know at any given date and time we can all be gone. Uh, and that's the end of me sharing the gospel with other people. Um, I don't know if it's an urgency that I suspect my, my life may be ending soon, and so I have to do everything I possibly can in this life for what it is that you want me to do. No matter where that urgency is coming from, God, I ask that you search my heart, that all the things that are causing me to still take time of this world, uh, hesitation, fear, all the things that the Israelites went through that caused them to have to wait an, another 30 some odd years before they got to go into the promised land. Search my heart of those things, God. I don't want anything to stop me from your will. I get up in the morning so excited to do your will. I make lots of mistakes throughout the day, but I go to bed knowing that tomorrow's another day and uh, I get to do your will and tell people about you and, and worship you and glorify you. And I just want to do that more and more. But I know that there's things in my life, some that I know, some that I'm not aware of yet, uh, that I'm asking you to help me with. I don't want to wait 30 some odd years <laughs> for my, my promised land. I don't want to have to delay anything that you want me to do simply because I'm caught up in my own kingdom. God, I want it to be all about your kingdom. Show me those things today. Show me those things that are causing me fear. Show me those things that are causing me to pause. Show me those things that are holding me back from being everything you made me to be for your body of Christ. God, I am here. I want to go. Show me where that needs to be. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>